initiating brute force attack on NASA mainframe. He whispers, illuminated only by his monitor's RGB glow and the ominous humming of a fan that's way too loud for how little work it's doing. He just installed Kaylee Linux yesterday, doesn't know what a subnet is, but he's damn sure he's three minutes away from becoming anonymous. This is phase one, the script kitty era, a beautiful cringe-filled time where every kid thinks Nmap is a magic wand and Metasploit is the key to world domination. YouTube tutorials are life. He's copy-pasting one-liners he doesn't understand from a website that hasn't been updated since 2013. He has a folder called Tools with 40 GitHub repos he cloned and never ran. He believes every problem can be solved with Hydra, Aircrack NG, and raw determination. Oh, and he definitely tried to hack the school Wi-Fi with a Raspberry Pi and a dream. But then, evolution happens. Phase 2. The YouTube Hacker Prodigy. Suddenly he's following every cybersecurity YouTuber, learning buzzwords like XSS and buffer overflow, and explaining it all to his friends like he's a tenured professor at Hacker University. He's writing Python scripts with names like BruteForce.py, and proudly putting for educational purposes only at the top, like that's going to save him from the FBI. His Kaylee desktop is a mess of open terminals, half-written notes, and Discord servers with usernames like 0x Night Phantom. He doesn't actually know what a payload does, but if it shows an alert box in a comment form, it's proof the website is horribly vulnerable. He's got swagger now. He's got a GitHub full of forks he's never contributed to and a burp suite he only uses in dark mode because it looks cooler. Enter phase three, the bug bounty awakening. This is where things get real. He registers on HackerOne. He installs Burp Pro and feels like he's got cheat codes enabled. His first report, found HTML injection in page title. Rejected in under three minutes. Severity, none. Reward, a feeling of despair. But he doesn't give up. He starts watching Live Overflow religiously. He begins understanding what HTTP headers actually do. He finds a subdomain that doesn't use HTTPS and thinks he's about to bring down Facebook. He learns what 403 forbidden means and also learns that most bugs are either duplicates, not exploitable, or just hallucinations. But once in a while, he gets a hit, a real one, a reflected XSS on a random .dev subdomain worth 50 bucks. He prints it out and puts it on his wall. He is now officially a hacker. Then comes phase four the midlife hacker crisis, also known as what the hell am I doing with my life? He spent three days building a recon pipeline that uses 12 tools, three VPSs, and more API keys than he can keep track of. He's running a mass, HTTPX, subfinder, and nuclei like he's preparing for digital war, but hasn't found a single valid endpoint in two weeks. His bookmarks folder is a black hole of hacker one write-ups and his clipboard history looks like a hacker manifesto. He contemplates switching to front-end development, Maybe React isn't so bad, but deep down, he knows there's no turning back. He's in too deep, so he starts a hacking blog, maybe a YouTube channel, titles like How I Found a Zero Dollar Bug in Nine Days and Still Felt Something. He questions everything, except Burp Suite. Burp is eternal. And then, like a phoenix rising from the ashes of stack traces and 403s. Phase 5, the Enlightenment Arc. This is where it clicks. He no longer Googles how to hack X website. He reads RFCs. He reverse engineers mobile apps. He digs through patch notes and finds the vulnerabilities they quietly fixed. He doesn't care about tool hype anymore. He writes his own scripts. He sets up VMs for target practice, practices binary exploitation, and can explain the difference between authentication and authorization without stuttering. He has opinions about content security policy. He knows what CORS is and why it ruins lives. He has crossed the threshold. And the wildest part? He looks back at phase one and cringes, but also smiles. Because every hacker starts there, with a cheap laptop, a copy of Kaylee Linux, and dreams of hacking NASA with a bash script. If you're watching this and you're in one of those early phases, don't worry. Everyone starts somewhere dumb. What matters is you keep going. You keep learning. You stop fearing 400-page PDFs and start reading them. That's the real glow-up. So, which phase are you in right now? Be honest. I won't judge. Unless you're still trying to use Hydra on your school Wi-Fi, then I might judge a little. But it's okay. We've all been there. Keep hacking, keep evolving, and remember, don't hack NASA. At least not from your home IP. Speaking of hackers pulling off ridiculous stunts, here's something even dumber. Most of them are broke. Why? Because they waste time watching random tutorials that teach them everything except how to actually make money. You know, like the folks pulling in $1,000, $5,000, even $10,000 plus from hacking. Just by knowing where to look, what to exploit, and how to turn vulnerabilities into payouts. That's exactly what we break down inside CyberFlows Academy. No fluff, no outdated theory, just the real skills that get results. Web hacking, bug bounty, reverse engineering, and full ethical hacking, all taught step by step so you actually know what you're doing. 
We even have a private community where hackers share exploits before they go public, so you'll see exactly how others are landing four-figure bounties and how you can do the same. Oh, and if you're impatient, our 51% affiliate system means you can start making money before you even find your first bug. Some members have made back their investment in weeks, others have turned hacking into a full-time job, spots are closing fast, every day you wait, some guy with a smart toaster is getting ahead of you. Click below, get inside, and start making hacking pay.